Uh, ladies and gentlemen, people of planet Earth. If you've missed, I do LPL call streams, L LCK call streams. Check them out live, if that's of your interest. If you missed them, you can check out my Mark Cannon VOD channel. Ad free enjoyment. Legal Legends patch 13.12. Let's take a look what is going to land for us. Uh, first shot, so this champion boss. First shot bonus damage increased from 115% to 120%. Volley base damage increased from 10 to 10. So basically they increased it by 10 damage. Enchant the crystal arrow AP ratio increased from 100% to 120%. So basically they've tried to, to cover all of the marks in terms of the builds. I think there is something interesting going on with, with IE and their interaction with... Um, with Infinity Edge, uh, but currently uh, Ash doesn't really stand out like something that is super super great. I think that maybe you compare Ash with 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 Milio. Um, let's double check how how Ash is currently doing. Ash on thirteen point eleven. So we have a Blade variant, so that's where the AP scaling becomes slightly relevant, right? Twenty percent. This is almost borderline like. It's it's borderline like a fucking Silas buff, more so than a, than an um, than an Ash buff. We have the the Q max variant that people are doing right Q max, and um, uh, you don't max W anymore. That's like the changeover in terms of the power. I've seen a lot of Trinity Force Ash. I've seen a lot of Infinity Edge Ash, and that's where like I would experiment a little bit more. I feel like Ginzu. I think that Ginzu is very interesting for champions that can actually leverage. Uh, the um, the mythic passive where they double dip with the magic pen and also the armor penetration uh, but so, so I would like stay clear of this I don't think it's that great I think in, in, in general what I would experiment with is uh, Trinity Force and, and also Infinity Edge but Infinity Edge is a very hard uh, item to slot in uh, because you're losing the mobility and additional stats from, let's say, a Storm Razor or a Trinity Force. But uh, Ash, I think, in terms of the 10 damage buff on Volley, I think that's pretty fucking big. And then the bonus damage increase, I think that's pretty decent too. Um, just to show you guys how um, how the the passive works. Ash basically normalizes her um, her damage output. In regards to critical strike. Ash support back on menu. I wouldn't say so. I think that uh, there was some abuse cases definitely. Uh, with uh, Echoes of Helia. Uh, and Echoes of Helia got nerfed. And I think that was a big enough hit to her. And sure there's cer circumstances where you are going to uh, have. Um, you know a good time. And you're going to uh, pretty much you know scale well into the game because you're gonna reach mandate and so forth but these are all uh, very very uh, expensive items good morning dom as, as you can see here basic attack against enemies with frost are modified to deal 150 percent plus 75 percent 35 so it scales with crit right it scales with the with the infinity edge and the, the unique thing here about ash is that she is a champion that can leverage the full effect of ie already on lower percent uh, lower percent scaling. You get more viewers when sleeping, not sure what that says, honestly. I might just turn into a sleep streamer. I might just take a na nap in a bathtub. Nipples out. Who knows? But nevertheless, I don't think Ash is super exciting as a champion, but that's what I would explore if you really want to play Ash. Uh, Gangplank, Powder Cake, E Research Timer, 18 seconds to 18, uh, 14 down. I think that the change to... It's like Navori. Do you got pepperonis like Gilius? No, I don't. Uh, I, I, powder Cake, cooldown down. I think that this is a decent buff. Uh, decent buff. Uh, I think that a lot of the things that you're doing with GP is heavily gated by your barrels. And considering you lost a lot of ability haste on... Um, Navori, which is a core item for GP, I think this is a very welcome buff. Uh, Kaiser, AD per level 2.6. Uh, this is going to definitely change some of the evolve windows for Kaiser. And I'm wondering if like one AD item plus a pickaxe, for example, should be enough for you to evolve, which which is a very interesting buff. But I think Kaiser's biggest issue still is the fact that she is just lanes very poorly uh, against most champs. You know? 
she she lanes very poorly against most champs. Passive life steal, uh, nine percent to eleven percent. Our cooldown down one twenty. Uh, okay, I, I don't have a strong opinion on Nasus or a strong feeling about Nasus. Uh, I think this is not something that we necessarily will see in pro play. Uh, so I think this this is kind of irrelevant. But uh, uh, for solo queue, that that's cool and all. I think that he probably felt the pain from Divine Sunder changes. Um, and they're kind of giving him power back is what I imagine. Oriana, our AP ratio 90% to 95%, which is uh, like this is this champion just keeps getting buffed. Our base damage is 400. This is starting to get a little bit wild here, Oriana. Um, I think that um, the big buff for Oriana was, of course, the changes to, uh, to how mid works. I think that's, uh, of course... Uh, in terms of how the minion works, it's very big for Oriana. This is a massive buff too. I think this is this is huge. Like eventually we'll reach a breaking point where mages are going to be very, very strong. Like uh, Riot clearly are signaling that uh, they want um, the um, damn mages to be played. Passive AP ratio 6% to 10%, E AP ratio 45 to 50, E missile speed 3,500 to 4,000. So Ryze is definitely uh, a champion that got hurt by the fact that uh, the minions got changed, in my opinion. Uh, I think that even though this is a decent buff, I think that the inherent problem of Ryze, especially when champions like Oriana are getting buffed like next to her, uh, are not going to be addressed here. I think a lot of the AD carries that um, are being played to the long range AD carries are champions that Rise struggles against, and um, it's rough. I think, though, if anything, I'm trying to think if there's any like top lane matchups where I'd want to play Rise, but nothing really stands out to me because, um, yeah. Nothing really stands out to me. But at least here, like with this change, I think that we, I might just go back to buying like death cap on third, you know? Death cap on th third is, is, is an interesting angle. 80 per level, 2.8 to 2.5. So, so we got nerfed. Ricochet, 80 ratio increase from 25 to 30 to 50. So we get 5% AD ratio on Ricochet, uh, which is pretty big, but we lose some AD. But once again, I think Sivir is in the Kaiser box, like uh, these, these champions just struggle a little bit too hard against um, what is in the meta. So finally, Gragas is nerfed. Passive cooldown 8 to 12. I think this is a decent nerf. I think that this Gragas passive is... What is allowing Ragas to nerf against, like, lane against any champion? It made, um, like, it, it, it allowed you to make so many mistakes in lane. And as long as you didn't die, you could recover anything. So I'm happy that Gragas is finally uh, getting nerfed. Kha'Zix is a menace in solo queue. Even after uh, the Yumu's nerfs, uh, Kha'Zix remains a heavy outlier. I think it's good that he gets get, it's nerfed. Uh, Kogma W% HP damage 3.5, so basically lower the damage by 0.5. This is a pretty hefty nerf. Uh, we saw it today in pro play, and I think it showed some potential. OMG played it. Uh, but this is a pretty hefty nerf. Um, like, uh, especially when it comes to these champions that see play very rarely. Uh, I think that in the context of pro play, these type of nerfs uh, kind of weigh heavy on you. But in the context of solo queue, a coma is something that's been doing well. Um, so I understand why this change needed to happen, so to speak. Okay, Sante, footwork E cooldown increased uh, by one and a half seconds. Okay. Uh, not the nerf that I would aim for, personally. Like, I would maybe target, like, the mana cost of Q or... Um, maybe the w cooldown uh, because i think that largely kesante will remain as the same champion i think that riot has a problem in the fact that kesante is very strong in pro play 
Like, I think people understand, misunderstand often that the people think that Kesante, they see Kesante doing Kesante things and they think Kesante is easy to play, but Kesante is not easy to play. Like, in, in solo queue, Kesante has been doing bad for a very long time. Like, this is pretty poor. Uh, Kesande looks like the most OP shit when he's dominating, but in a lot of games, people don't know how to use his kit. And um, his abilities are not super easy to use uh, in terms of the combos that are available and also knowing when to do all out, you know? Uh, it is, you know, uh, something to think about. So I think Kesante is one of those champions that is like in the Azir tier, right? And I think that it deserves a little bit of a heavier punch to the forehead uh, because... At least in my mind, I think that these Entufu strikes, you see that the 50 mana, 50 mana, right? 15 mana, and I think that um, this is kind of silly. The ability's cooldown is reduced by bonus armor and magic resistance, and its cast time is reduced by bonus health. Um, I just read that, and I just wanted to read that out loud because it sounds silly. Uh, 15 mana, I think, is a bigger issue because similar to Gragas, Kesante can get away with laning against almost anything due to the fact that this spell costs 15 mana. So, I think this is where pro players are leveraging this champion at the best. And the fact that it can go mid and top, I think, is a little bit problematic. We continue. Lulu. Three armor down, passive damage down, which is pretty big, pretty hefty. Lulu has been way too relevant for way too long. It's like in, in, in pro play, Lulu's biggest strength is her level 1, 2, 3. There's almost no supers that can contest her. She's way too strong level 1. And this definitely targets that. Uh, I believe this makes sense. I don't think that um, Lulu's identity of what she is later on in the game, sure. Maybe you could argue that polymorph uh, duration is a little bit too big. I think that um, this is a decent nerf. Milio is getting a similar nerf. Uh, passive damage on hit damage. Wow, this is a big nerf. This is a very, very big nerf. But not surprising. It's like this, the, the, the damage on this passive was, was way too much. And I think that this is going to, this nerf is going to remove Milio from... Uh, from the first pick prior list. Uh, it, this is going to make the champion a lot more niche. Uh, this is a massive, massive nerf. Uh, Melio is getting completely headshotted here. Complete headshot. Uh, like, Lulu is having a great time. <laughs> like, Lulu is very, very happy. So if Lulu has to tank such a nerf and then uh, Melio gets this at the same time, I think Melio is very, uh, Lulu is very happy. See Riot Raptor. Uh, let's pull up Riot Raptor. Uh, Rel has been very healthy. Don't let the win rates you've been seeing for 13-11 fool you. They are held down by her one-day rates. Her win rate super has been climbing to around 55% with jungle side behind that. Uh, cast time, 4 seconds. Okay. Alright, percent damage cap. <laughs> this was a very, very important uh, nerf. A uh, very, very important nerf. Like, I don't know if you guys saw the clips of Rel one-shotting Drakes, uh, but this was just, I think... I knew right away when this happened that, oh, this is just uh, a Riot uh, completely trolling. Completely trolling. Um, Monster mods converting our helper in the jungle from multiplier onto the damage to flat numbers. This will make balancing around things like AP a bit easier going forward. These numbers should be only slight enough to early clear, primary from percent EMA and bigger. But not crushing. Hit it to her middle to lay him clear. Alright. Jungle damage for 300%. Bonus damage. Bonus damage. Bonus damage. Okay. I have to say, I didn't really try too much rel after the micro patch, but the micro patch buff was really massive. Like, that was one of the biggest buffs that I've ever seen in, a, like, in the history. Like, this, this, this buff... 
I've never seen a champion get that big of a buff in, in one patch. Like, this was crazy. So, I, I wasn't surprised that this uh, really, really ramped her up to, to, to a whole different dimension. Yeah, yeah this, these patch notes were bigger than some other patch notes. Still think, uh, I, I don't think Rel has found her place just yet, but I think this cast time change on Q is really big buff. This cast time change is really, really massive. So I think this is a really big quality of life and it will make it a lot easier to actually kill people. This is, this is really, really big. You can kill someone into W and I think this will feel like a lot more alive. I think this is a massive buff. Right, we're in draft. Let me see like a good breakaway point. I think that uh, we do champion nerfs and then we continue. Uh, Yumi E attack speed buff 35% to 25%. AP scaling remains the same. Heal per hit down to 25. I've already said this before. I don't think Yumi is that strong. I don't think Yumi is that strong. Uh, but I'm happy that they nerf Yumi. I think that Yumi should be piss useless. I think Yumi should be troll to pick. Uh, so I'm happy that it gets nerfed. For example, the, the item nerf to Echoes of Helia is... The item nerf to Echoes of Helia was a big, uh, big nerf already. Uh, because Yumi got so much play just because of how OP the support items were, you know? Honestly, I'm surprised by how well uh, Yumi is doing in solo queue. So maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong on this. I'm surprised by how well she's doing in solo queue. So maybe maybe I'm just wrong. Could be. Could be that I'm just wrong on this. Maybe it just doesn't matter. Like, there was a point where she bought Echoes of Helia, right? And, um... At least my take on this champ, right, is just that you should just try to find AP numbers, you know? Like, when I was playing this champion, I was still buying Mandate first. Because, at least my take on this champion is that you just want to get as much AP as possible. As, like, um, Echoes of Helia with uh, Font of Life was really, really popping off. And it seems like even on 13.11, after Echoes, Echoes of Helia is nerfed, that it's really popping off. I think the biggest buff to Yumi was, of course, that all the support items became really, really insane. Uh, all the support items became so cheap, and Yumi can just carry them without risk, right? Uh, but yeah, I think that my read on how strong Yumi was, uh, this definitely tells a different tale. And if this is the number currently of Yumi, I think that uh, she should get nerfed even harder. Like, way harder. Like, I think that they should hit this even harder. Like, this is too little. They, this should be nerfed more. Zeri, shield passive removed. Q no longer proc Sheen, MS 330 to 335, E damage 065 to 085. So let me just read real quick uh, what Zeri damage we're talking about here on on the E. So I think that Zeri passive, basically her passive, living battery, she doesn't absorb the shield, but she removes the shield. Q no longer procs Sheen, so obviously Trinity Force is completely dead. And now I just want to see the compensation on E. So basically, afterwards she gains lightning rounds for 5 seconds, empowering burst fire to deal bonus magic damage to first enemy hit increased based on critical strike. So at least at least in terms of DPS for crit, it's it's a it's a decent buff, but like you lose all the survivability, and Zeri needs survivability because she is relatively short range. And she needs to be able to trade her HP bar uh, for, for space. Uh, all in all, I think that um yeah, Zeri is kind of murdered here. Trinity Force really kept her alive, and now she has no shield bow, she has no access to anything. I have to say that the MS buff, the 5 MF, uh, MS buff, is pretty decent, considering how her ult works, right? Uh, that she gets uh, percentage move speed. For each stack, she gets percentage move speed, so that you're gonna feel like a, a, a pretty decent level of amp up here, and the crit builds will definitely be like rewarded in terms of the damage that you can output but it's not um i think the nerf is way worse than the the, the so-called buffs so i think definitely this will really hit um zeri in the juggler
We just have to see, like, um, you know, jungle pool remains heavily the same. Maybe when Vi is out, maybe Zeri can still lane. Maybe people can play the crit Zeri with Lulu and maybe it could work, you know? All right, uh, champion adjustments. So basically, we covered this part already. Champion adjustment. Vigilance. When Lucian is empowered by another ally, his next two basic attacks will deal bonus magic damage. When Lucian is healed or shielded by an ally, or when a nearby champion is immobilized, his next two basic attacks will deal bonus damage. So they nerf the damage. Well, this is cool, right? Because uh, at least there's some synergy now with all-in supports. Um, but the damage is down. And additionally, keep in mind, this is a nerf to like Lucian Nami, as an example, right? Because it the text is specifically changed when Lucian is healed or shielded by an ally. So Empowered covered all of the above for example sona e or nami e right these abilities so they don't give you a proc so this altogether is just a nerf rumble you get added shield from nami e that's true that's true yeah that's fair that's fair But either way, the damage is nerfed. But I have to say as a conclusion, right? I don't think this is that big of a deal. I still think uh, Lucian is happy. At maximum heat 100 to 150, danger zone still starts at 50, overheat 20% to 80% attack speed for 525, 5 to 130. So it's stronger but shorter. I think this kind of... Um, uh, sucks for jungle uh, at least my my mind goes to jungle right away and it seems like this sucks for jungle unless these changes are enough right on the q damage monster caps adjusted e heat uh 10 to 20 health 659 plus 99 625 to 105 so this is okay base that nerf i'd say uh, q damage target max hp w shield plus percentage match max hp our cooldown, 100 to 130, 80. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know how to feel about this. Uh, because I don't think that what Rumble gains here is big enough to compensate for the nerfs that he's getting. I think the R cooldown up is a pretty like big, big gut punch. But I understand that they want to like move rumble into being a top laner rather than being a mid laner so they are putting more emphasis on the bruiserish aspects of his uh, kit uh, i don't know how to judge this i think that um on first glance i need to like try personally how it feels to manage the heat because i think that part is very important and i can't really judge um how it is they did buff his damage to jungle camps, but keep in mind as well that you are going to overheat a lot less, right? So that's like a compensation buff for the nerfs. Because like being in the danger zone was really OP for camps because you had percentage max damage and you like took a big shit on camps. Uh, but now you're going to heat overheat later, right? Yeah, Q does max HP damage, right? But keep in mind, it's like you need to get the full duration of it, right? These are just things that I need to try. I need to see how much, how if jungle, jungle speed has changed. And I also need to understand how it feels to manage the heat. Uh, I think on, on first glance, it's not super easy to, um, to judge this change, in my opinion. I think the fact that I'm, I'm curious about the math on this, right? 
in terms of uh, the target max, max HP in compensation for the flat. But 6, six to 10% target max HP does sound decent. It does sound pretty fucking decent for uh, the damage change. But it should be worse in mid. It should be worse on mid. I just, I think that, um, I think this just overall looks like a nerf. I think this overall just looks kind of bad. Uh, that's my take uh, currently. Immortal Shield Bow, 7% life steal to 10%. Okay. Mid lane gold, 1 minus gold per minion kill removed. Okay. That's neat, I guess. Uh, Moonstone Renewer Echo Heal So they're just buffing Mythic Passive 5 Ability Haste to 5 Heal and Shield Power So they're even They're doubling down They're just Making this into the ultimate Soraka item I don't know why they don't give it like a unique effect Like They're, they're just Turning this item into A pure healing item it's like if your champion doesn't have like power allocation onto heal and shield power moonstone is very useless for you very useless and you have to think to yourself it's like if you look at the champions that have an overwhelming power allocation to heal and shield power then it's like soraka is the obvious one and then everything else is kind of like, uh, maybe I'd like something else. You know? Sona maybe, you know? And we, we just scroll down, right? It's like, which champions are really over-indexed on heal and shield power when it comes to their power distribution? It's like, it's only Soraka. It's like, I still don't feel like I would want to buy this item over some of the other items that exist. Yeah, it's only Soraka. I don't know, it's such a weird item. Like, who would want to buy this? It's just like, healing shield power. It's like all of this shitty long text just translated to healing shield power. Milio, no. So Milio, I think, is very happy with... Um... Milio, maybe. Milio, maybe, honestly. But... Shurelia is so OP. I don't know. I, I think just fucking re like revert the change to this item. I feel like the old Moonstone would be a very interesting addition right now. Just give it an effect that is... That can be, like, leveraged, you know? And gives you, like, some dynamic patterns. I think it just would be interesting. Phantom Dumpster attack speed 5%. Okay, that's that's neat. Uh, static shift, energized damage 80 to 190. To 6 to 18. Okay. Well, that's, that's a pretty decent buff. Uh, that's a pretty decent buff. I have to kind of rate it in the context of all the other items though. So let's just check the other nerfs. Arden Sense is on hit damage, so Arden Sense got nerfed again. Uh, price increased 3200 to 3400. Like, Arden Sense is completely boomed. <laughs> they really, they really, really don't like Arden Sense, so just deleted this gate item, out of the, the, the item out of the gate. Price 200 cost increase. Gale Force damage down. Holy, no, they just deleted Yasuo, Yasuo and uh, Yon with Gale Force. <laughs> they completely headshotted them. This is a nerf until 444 bonus AD. <laughs> Aye. Bro, I'm telling you guys, I, what are AD carries supposed to buy as a first item? 
you are uh, you are so homeless in terms of your uh, item choices. It's like you can buy Kraken now and maybe Static Shiv. That's like your choices now. Trinity Force, Static, and and the last like uh, what did I miss? I I'm spacing. I slept too little. Static Shiv. Trinity and Kraken. Yes. Gale Force. Okay, we talk about Gale Force. Imperial Mandate 3575 to 4060. Level 8 to 18. Damage 2 70 to 150, 80 to 120. Move speed 25%. Still think Imperial Mandate is going to be strong. I think this is. This changes whatever. Really. Yeah, people still sleeping on ER for sure. Overheal, 20 to 300 to 11 max HP. I think this is garbage. I think this is pretty garbage. Um, maybe I would consider playing like Fiora with Overheal. Or like Camille with Overheal. Or Irelia with Overheal. But I didn't do it before. And the games where I reach 3k HP, I'm telling you guys, it's quite rare. It's like a very, very deep late game rune. Because keep in mind, it's like you need to reach about 2.8k HP for this to be value, value, valuable. But the caveat here is the fact that you're not gated by level, you're gated by items. Because reaching level 18, so comparing it to like level 18, doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So I, I don't know. I think this is a weird one. For sure for AD carry, this is pretty trash. For sure for AD carry, this is pretty trash. Uh, you're not going to see it that much for AD carry, but at the same time, it's like, what else do you take in that, uh, in that part of the tree? It's like you can take Overheal or Triumph. And um, like, I, I don't think... I don't, I don't put, put much thought into such a rune even existing, you know? It's like, the, 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 the rune is strong, it's because BT is strong. And that's it. It's like BT is bought third or fourth every game. And that is the only cases where you see over, the only reason you see over you, so. I don't know. Yeah, I think it can be interesting for like, uh, as I mentioned, Fiora, Camille, and um, maybe even Aatrox can, can take this, you know, maybe Aatrox, trying to think of other things. And that's about it. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, Olaf could be one too, for sure, yeah. Rapid Fire Cannon, Energize Damage down. Okay. Red buff. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> There's just too many red buffs in the game. <laughs> so they nerf red buff. <laughs> okay. Too many red buffs in the game, guys. So they nerf red buff, which makes sense. I think that makes sense. Okay. Uh, my conclusion on this patch, guys. Just fucking play champions to buy Trinity Force. Nothing has changed. I don't know. Trinity Force went under the radar for everything. I think Trinity Force is really broken. Uh, buy Trinity Force. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. I think also on AD carries, really explore Essence River really really explore essence river as uh, as an item uh, for for some uh, for some for some uh, for some good stuff trinity force why essence river when you can trinity force though essence river is cheaper and it's also not a mythic and some of those stats are not useful
for all champions. I still think Essence Reaver is one of the most OP items in the game. Very underutilized. Yeah, but I answered your question. I do think Trinity Force is really OP, but I think Essence Reaver is really OP too. Now finally looking at this. Just trying to remind myself of what I'm surprised that it didn't change. If there's anything that uh, has been missed. Yeah, but you are completely like, uh, with a statement like that, Grimoire, you're completely neglecting like talking about what champion you're playing. And that's obviously super important. Yeah, Nico, I think the quality of life that Nico has received is way too crazy. I I think it's way too crazy. I, I think this champion is absurdly frustrating to play against. I don't know if there's going to be like a kind of learning curve for players to understand how it is to play against this kit. But I think that Nico... I think Nico is way too flexible, and I think that uh, Nico is too strong. I think her ult and her W is way too stupid. I don't care too much about her damage. I think her damage is fair. I think just her R readability and W flexibility is way too strong. Way too strong. Oh yeah, Wukong and Vi doesn't get didn't get changed at all. That's kind of funny. I think at some point you just have to say, yo, these champions have been played way too much, just fucking kill them already because uh, pro teams are not finding ways to adjust. And honestly, I don't blame them. I, I think it's not super easy to find ways to adjust. I guess we are just going to see Wukong, Vi, Ari and... Um, Ari and Annie till the, till the dawn of time. I think another thing that should be talked about is is just some of the tank items. Some of the tank items are just, just a little bit too strong. <laughs> the tank items are a little bit too strong. No one really wants to play like any of the anti-tank uh, champions. Uh, I think that uh, the tank items are just too cheap and too strong. And I think also it's so... It's like Divine Sunderer got pretty hit pretty hard and tanks were already really really good before when Divine Sunderer was good against tanks. So I think they need to address tanks in some shape or form because this is this is getting a bit um, boring. I guess I guess that's what I'm I'm looking out for. But yeah, I think just buy Trinity Force. You want to succeed? Buy Trinity Force. It's like, look, let's say, like, let's, let's look at Kindred. People buying fucking Trinity Force on Kindred. I, it's, it's done, dude. It's done. Trinity Force on Kindred, mate. We're buying Trinity Force on Kindred. So people. Uh, it's a mess. It is a mess. To be honest, Trinity Kinder isn't that great. It's... I think every metric is pointing against that, my friend. Trinity Kindred isn't that great unless you have many marks. Bro. Kindred just isn't strong if she hasn't doesn't have marks. Period. But... There's, there's no item... That is going to save Kindred from not having marks. <laughs> Guys, the, the numbers speak for themselves. Here there is no like idea of an outlier or anything uh, that is pointing to, to things uh, uh, being weird. It's like here all of the metrics are pointing to the fact that Trinity is by far, you know, uh, the, the, the strongest item.
That's if you're uh, the diviners. Uh, this is very interesting. But this can be like game specific too, right? I remember that Freak spoke about something that um, basically in a lot of cases uh, the recommended item is becomes overbought and it skews the metrics because in some cases right it's like um, more the better players will be more educated in terms of their item choices you know It's an interesting thing to explore. Yeah, just buy Trinity Force, guys. It's Trinity Force meta time. No. Trinity on Rex, I know. The on, the on Rex, I should go straight breaker, I think. At least it sounds just better in my mind. <laughs> Jax. Wait, did LPL start? Not yet. This is a website called LOL Analytics. It's a pretty decent website. It's not that complicated. It's like they usually the summary of things. They find like uh, builds. They 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 kind of have a calculation for what data is significant enough. Like for example, a build that was bought three games is not going to show up here as a core build, right? Senna is buying Trinity Force. That sounds completely crazy. Nah, that's that's just bad. This is too small of a sample size, but this is just fucking bad, by the way. This is this is really really bad. Don't do this, guys. <laughs> don't do this one. Yeah, I don't care about your Obito GG, mate. Like your anecdotal experience playing Trinity Force. Senna really doesn't matter. Yeah, try for scale is something that I've seen, yeah. But yeah, that's a very, very small sample size once again. So it's not significant. Here as well, it's important not to be... Like, looking at the game time is super important. Right? It's like Rift Maker is often bought second or third, right? So the win ratio of Rift Maker will be higher. But the same thing can be said for Ginzu. But the time finished, it's like the deeper you go into a game, win ratios will increase. The more items you buy, win ratios will increase. If we look at, for example, Quad, this is four items. You see that the win ratios are all above 60%. Because the, the stronger you are, the more often you win, right? Because either you're ahead, you're either ahead or you're even or you're behind. But in more cases where you're ahead, you're going to buy more items. Something that heavily skewed Ezreal win ratios in the past when it came to Trinity Force was in games where he was buying Trinity Force, he would lose them before he finished the item. And uh, he wouldn't... Um, he wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't add to the statistic of Trinity Force losing. 
Which is kind of funny, I think. Kind of funny. Same thing here, right? It's like Trinity Force is finished first. Navori is finished maybe third, right? So the win ratio looks higher. The sample size is smaller. So the, the Trinity Force data is more significant here in my mind. Because the time when it's finished is very important. Because in the end here, right, you see two items, two items. Trinity Force data is heavily supporting Trinity Force. You know? As an example. You see here, item first. If, if when people rushed Navuri, they are, they are completely losing the mind. First item Navuri. It's very funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But yeah, my point is, buy Trinity Force. And if you need like a different mythic, let's say you want Stormraiser, or you want um, Navori, right? Let's say you're playing Zaya or, or maybe Lucian. I think this is where I would consider Essence Reaver. Like Essence Reaver in this slot instead of Storm Razor, I would consider that. Like basically Essence Reaver here. I might be a little Essence Reaver salesman, but uh, let me pull up the wiki for you guys and show you what's up with Essence Reaver. This item, the base stats, look at the base stats, guys. Juicy, juicy. Severe, don't play severe. That is juicy. Bubblicious. And this is without, of course, spell blades. You need short CDs for pro Sheen procs. Yeah, but that's why I mentioned specific champions. Right? Zaya and Lucian. Because they can actually leverage the ability haste. And they can play around the procs. Uh, let me put, take you guys down memory lane, okay? So, at 1025, okay? 1025... This item was increased from 50 AD to 55, okay? And 11.7, they nerfed this item. By 10 AD. And during this, of course, it was a different meta, different, uh, different context altogether, different champions, different, uh, different items in the game altogether. But this buff here pushed this item into OP tier. People were buying this on Viego. People were buying this on, on Rengar, which is something that we still see, right? With, uh, like, for example, uh, Rengar players, they go uh, Duskblade into Essence Reaver. That's like a real thing, right? Uh, I, I think that Essence Reaver is just an underrated item. Uh, that is all. Underrated item. You can buy one health potion for jungling, yeah? Trinity Force Rengar. I wonder if that's the thing. Trinity Force Rengar, 257 games. But Duskblade is having a good time in general. This is such a good build, I don't I don't know if I would ever want to pivot from this. I wouldn't want to pivot from this, man. This is the juicer right here. What do you think about Yon in competitive? Yon in competitive just got really nerfed. <laughs> Thoughts on Essence River Ash? I think Trinity Force is just better. 
What items on Kaiser? I need to check exactly how much AD you got from the buffs. How that changes if you can itemize differently. The mana part of Essence River is really whatever. It's a, such a small part of the item, you don't really care. It's, it's, it's really whatever. So I, I think it's fine. But okay, that's my thoughts on the batch notes. I, th I think we covered it all. Uh, I don't know how much uh, how much Kaiser will actually change with the, with the AD AD change, but I could see a world where just you switch out this first item, maybe. How much AD do you get from Static Shiv? Forty-five. Kraken is forty, right? Kraken is forty. Because Kraken is also like a, a semi-interesting item on, on, on Kaiser. I don't know if you can either buy Static or Kraken and then go Ginzu and then reach upgrade with Doran's Blade. Maybe this is something that can be done. Because I don't think Storm Razor is it, man. I, think, I don't think Storm Razor is it. Interesting here. No boots upgrade is doing so well. <laughs> Obviously, it's not that big of a sample size, 9,000, but it is something to consider. Here's the static shift Ginzu build, and there's the Kraken, uh, Kraken Ginzu build. Storm Razor does seem kind of uh, un uh, like unintuitive. I, I don't think this is this is the way. Okay, OMG vs JGG, let me join the sack guys.